ففروا إلى الله إني لكم منه نذير مبين ولا تجعلوا مع الله إلها آخر إني لكم منه نذير مبين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأدعو لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا نبدو ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وسلم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We thank Almighty Allah who has spared our life till today and inshallah today is another day in Ramadan and we want to use this opportunity to remind ourselves again so the topic I want to discuss today is Muslima with purification of soul, with his purity and soundness. So when we look at the topic, the first thing to consider is who is a Muslima. A Muslima is a female species of Allah who has accepted the supremacy of Almighty Allah. She has submitted herself to Almighty Allah and she has taken it that whatever happens to him, to her, actually come from Almighty Allah. She believes that Almighty Allah is the most powerful and has power over everything. And when we talk about the soul, the soul is like the engine to the body. And in Islam, the soul takes a paramount place. And that is why Almighty Allah in Quran 9 verse 7 to 10 was telling us about the soul. Almighty Allah said that was a belay mina shaitan rojim wa nafsin wa masawaha fala amaha fujuraha wa taqwaha qad afla man zakaha wa qad khaba man dasaha Almighty Allah said and he swear by the soul and him who made it perfect then inspire it to understand what is right and what is wrong he has succeeded, he who purifies his soul. And he has actually loses, he who neglected his soul. So Almighty Allah was swearing by the soul and making it clear that to every soul he has made clear what is right and what is wrong. And he now make it mandatory for us that we should try as much as possible to purify our soul so that we will be successful. And anybody that neglects his soul will actually be a loser in the sight of Almighty Allah. And when the Prophet وسلم, was talking about the soul, the Prophet وسلم, said, There is a flesh in the body, which if it, is pure, if, if it is pure, the whole body is pure. And if it is impure, the whole body becomes impure. And he said, Certainly, that flesh is the heart. And what that means is that the heart is very, very important because it's like the engine to the body. If the engine is not good, there is no way the body can perform very well. And that is why, as Muslims, we need to actually pay attention to our souls. Because whatever we do, we actually reflect what is actually in our heart. In Islam, the heart or the soul can be divided into three. The first one is the nafsul amara. Nafsul amara is the soul that commands to evil. It's a corrupt soul that does not know the difference between good and evil. And this one, Almighty Allah referred to it in Quran 12, verse 53. When Prophet Yusuf was saying that every soul called to evil, except he who Almighty Allah has mercy upon. So, and when you look at it, at every stage before one becomes conscious of Almighty Allah, every soul belongs to the North Sulamara. Because you do things as it occurs to you without looking at the consequence. The second one is the nafsul lawama, the questioning soul. 
The soul that we continuously question the owner of the soul before and after an action has been done. And that one will make the owner of the soul to actually look back and take cognizance of what is actually doing. And this one, we can see when Almighty Allah was talking about it in Surah to Kiyama. Almighty Allah says that he swear by the questioning soul. Then the third one is the Nafsul Mutmaina, the soul at rest with his Lord. So this soul is the soul that does not sin at all. The soul that is well pleased with Allah, and Allah is well pleased with it. And this type of soul belongs to the prophets and the righteous ones. And Almighty Allah referred to this type of soul when Almighty Allah was talking about it in Quran 89, verses 27 to 30. Almighty Allah said, I will be live in a shaitan regime. Ya ayah to her, no soul motmaina. Irje ila robiki rodia dan, mordia. Fad uli fi ibadi, waduhuli janati. Almighty Allah said, I call you the soul at rest that is pleased with Allah, and Allah is pleased with her. Enter Jannah with others. So this is telling us that in Islam with these three type of souls, many of us fall, many of our souls fall within the second one. Because most of the time, our soul will be between two forces, asking us, why are you doing it? What you want to do is right, what you want to do is wrong. And it takes our free will for us to now decide on what to do, either to continue with that action or not. Having known the type of souls that we have, we need to know what are those things that corrupt our souls. As human beings, we are faced with so many forces. And the first one that has the highest level of impurity is shirk, associating partner with Allah. Associating partner with Allah in the sense that when you are taking all the glory, all the honor, that all to belong to Allah, you are giving to it, you are giving it to another thing. Then that is when you associate partner with Allah, whether you are conscious of it or you are not conscious of it. Because one thing is for us to say we are Muslims, another thing is for us to act as Muslims. When you talk about associating partner with Allah, it's not only when you decide, no, I'm going to have an idol in my house or I'm going to be prostrating to another God aside from Allah. And that is why the Prophet wasallam said we should be praying against the shriek that is apparent and the one that is hidden. Because as long as you decide to do anything that goes against the law of Allah due to another person's influence, at that particular time you are preferring that person or that situation to Almighty Allah. And, and that is also a type of associating partner with Allah. Then another thing that can actually spoil the heart is greediness. When you are self-centered, you don't think about the welfare of others, but you are only concerned about yourself. So even if you are comfortable, you can decide to throw things into the dustbin while your neighbor goes hungry. When you have more than enough, you can decide to let it rot away without actually helping others with it. You have the culture of just, uh, just accumulating, accumulating, and you don't have the culture of giving out. It spoils the heart because it makes you to be self-centered. You don't have any concern for the other person. Then another one is envy and jealousy. When you envy somebody, you prefer that anything good that happened to that person should belong to you or should go away without benefiting the person. And when you have this attitude, 
if somebody is successful you are not happy and if somebody is in problem that is when you are happy so it's a situation of impure heart another one is telling lies and tell Karen when you tell lies and you say what is not right and when you look at our situation these days the handset that we are having have turned many of us into liars because you know the other person you are talking to there is no way he can know what you are saying and the situation you are you have opportunity of saying a lot of things at the end of the day that may not be true as muslim women we must be conscious of it that even if the person we are talking to does not know what we are going through almighty allah knows so we should be truthful every time another one is backbiting and slandering that when you decide to talk about somebody on what he has not done is backbiting or what he actually is actually doing is backbiting but what he has not done is slandering and the last one I want to talk about on the problem of the heart is the love of the world and the fear of death. Many of us, we love the world. Everything good about it and we fear death is a problem of the heart. And in order to purify our heart, the first thing is that we should fear Allah alone. We should make sure that we accord Almighty Allah the honor that he deserves. Do his wishes and leave all that we go against the law of Allah. The second one is that we should be, should be spiritually upright. We should observe our salawat as our when due. Make sure we do our askar. Make sure we observe our tahajjud, our kiyamule. Make sure you do good to others. And make sure at the end of the day that whatever your heart commands you to do that is against the wish of Allah, you do the opposite. Another one is knowledge. You should seek knowledge about the Quran, about the Hadith, the life of the companions, how they live their life, and how they are able to succeed in purifying their hearts. Another one is reading books that are written by very reasonable authors that understand the Sunnah and the Quran of Allah, so that the message you are going to get there will be benefiting to you. The last one I want to talk about is for us to be in the midst of God-fearing people. Those people that fear Allah, that will always command you and remind you about the laws of Almighty Allah. So that when you want to get and get, go against the law of Allah, they will call you back. I pray Almighty Allah make it easy for us to purify our hearts and accept all our deeds. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That is for Deen, Al Islam, religion with Allah since time began. That is for Dik, remembering Allah, and Ra is for the month of Ramadan. Oh, Ramadan. That is for Zakah, to cure our greed when we give our money to those in need. That is for salamun alaykum, peace be with you wa alaykum as